The Russian president um, could be in the most vulnerable position the world has ever seen him in. But as far as for what could happen next is really the question. I want to talk to the experts about that. Evelyn Farkas, uh, former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Eurasia, currently Executive Director at the McCain Institute and former uh, U.S. Ambassador to Ukraine, John Erbst, who is now the Senior Director of the Atlantic Council's uh, Eurasia Center. Welcome to you both. Um, appreciate it. Evelyn, let me just start with you on this one. And this is going to be a question um, for both of you, which is, do you feel as if Putin is in a weakened state right now? And if so, what does that mean going forward? Right, Yasmin, he clearly is in a weakened state. I mean, he was confronted in the most blatant military fashion um, by one of his mercenary chiefs, by his erstwhile ally, Yevgeny Prigozhin, and the Wagner forces. And the, you know, the, the confrontation was only solved when Putin backed down. I mean, of course, Prigozhin also backed down, but all of this left a lot of blood in the water. I'm sure that the elites in Moscow now see Putin as very weak. Um, somebody who, you know, looked like he was almost going to fall from power yesterday, certainly looked nervous. Um, that's not a, he didn't, he didn't radiate any strength yesterday. And so I think as a result, what we're going to see is Putin trying to assert his authority, uh, trying to clamp down on the elites and on Russian society. It's, it's going to be some rough riding going forward. Ambassador, if in fact you agree with um, Evelyn's analysis there, how in fact do you expect the Russian president to assert his authority? There's no question he's been seriously diminished. There's no question that he was afraid of a confrontation with a man who was seen as a war hero in Russia, despite all of his ethical um, lapses, you might say, and that Putin um, blinked. Uh, this, this he cannot escape. I don't know what he'll do next. It's true that he might be able to uh, get a final solution to Prigozhin in Belarus, but everybody would understand that's his hand, and he would have then be responsible for the death of, again, of a popular figure in Russia. So Putin has to tread very carefully. And there's a lot of speculation now that at some point in the not too distant future, there will be new, a new minister of defense and a new um, top general. But they don't want to do that right now, because that would suggest that Prigozhin insisted on it. It's interesting, as you call Prigozhin this popular figure um, in Russia, do you think that Prigozhin is taking that into account, Evelyn, as he took this deal yesterday, seeing that he was applauded as he entered and exited the city, feeling as if Russian President Vladimir Putin would not necessarily take him out as he would other adversaries that would have pulled something off like this because of the popularity that he has, it seems, not only amongst Russian citizens, but amongst the Russian military. Right, Yasmin. I mean, look, make no mistake, whether the, a, a given Russian citizen or member of the military likes the war or not, what they all agree on is that the war is not going according to plan. The war is not going well. And Prigozhin said it loudly and publicly. And for that, they applaud him because he looks like he's looking out for the, for the average, you know, Ivan in the field. So um, Prigozhin probably thinks there's some protection in that. And I would, I would venture to say that he, he might be right. Uh, the other aspect of it is if he is indeed allowed to go to Belarus, I think the Belarusian leader, um, Alexander Lukashenko, will actually protect him because that will be a little bit of a trump card, a little bit of a, uh, a card that he can play, he being the Belarusian leader, against Putin, potentially. Prigozhin knows a lot, what? and he still controls the Wagner empire. Actually, I want you to expand on that for a moment, and then, Ambassador, I'm going to come to you. What incentive does Lukashenko have to protect Prigozhin? His, his health is failing, right? I mean, he, he may very well have been set up to take leadership in Belarus, for all we know, um, considering his, his relationship right. with Lukashenko and Putin. So, so what incentive does he have? Well, so this is the, you just raised something completely new that I hadn't even thought of, Yasmin. So this is how interesting <laughs> this whole scenario is. There are so many possibilities there. This is not a transparent situation by any stretch of the imagination. But the Belarusian leader, Alexander Lukashenko, he wants to control Belarus and he wants Belarus to, re to maintain its sovereignty. He has been resisting a complete fusion between Russia and Belarus 
ever since Putin has been pushing for it. And so Prigozhin offers him another means potentially to put pressure on Putin to maintain um, Belarus's uh, utility to Putin or frankly Lukashenko, Lukashenko's utility to Putin. Um, Ambassador, um, it seems as if this is a real moment for Ukraine, and I've been speaking about this um, throughout the last 24 to 48 hours, um, and how they really capitalize in, on it, right? That is the real question. Um, can they actually even go so far as to take back territory that has been taken from them, for instance, to go so far as to um, effort to take back Crimea? Is this a moment they can really capitalize um, on that? I know we are just 24 hours outside of this conflict, but it's really all about planning, and it will take time. Uh, first point, well, the Ukrainian counteroffensive, which is now about three weeks old, has not gone as well as observers expected. In fact, Ukraine has taken back over 100 square kilometers of territory, which compares favorably with Moscow's nine-month offensive to barely take Bakhmut. That's point one. Point two, um, certainly the lack of control we are seeing in Russia today we're still seeing, even with the resolution yesterday, means that Ukraine has an additional advantage. Uh, the fact that the most popular military figure in Russia, Prigozhin, went against Putin will further demoralize, already demoralized Russian soldiers. Mm. And the fact that Prigozhin's soldiers took control of rostov na Donu, which is where they had the headquarters of Russian activity for their war in Ukraine, is another sign of chaos on the Russian side, which the Ukrainians can and I think will take advantage of. There are reports today on Telegram, the Russian um, social media site, and I, so I can't say this is true, but often stuff on Telegram proves to be true, just early to be reported, that the Ukrainians have put not just soldiers, but some uh, armor on the left bank of the Dnipro River um, in the Kherson area. That would be a, a significant new development. Mm. Ambassador John Herbst, um, thank you so much. Evelyn Farkas, um, thank you as well.